it's Bridget. Hi. Hey, nice to see you. Did I just yell in your ear? Sorry about that. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I actually got a request from my Instagram because I do post on Instagram at Bridget Inspired on Instagram. And I asked about who I should channel. And I got this great recommendation to talk with Judy Garland again. Now we have spoken with Judy Garland before. And if you don't know that, now you do, check out the playlist for Judy. It is listed here on Above Life channel. And I actually have a video where I went to her childhood home here in Minnesota a couple of years ago. And so I have lots of pictures from the museum and the home. So check that out too. So again, playlist Above Life channel. Hmm. Feeling kind of um, festive today. I'm actually recording this in the fall of 2021, kind of trying to embrace the gentle ease into the fall time because I'm really a summer person and fall's okay. It's got good stuff to offer, but it's colder. So I've got my purple on and my Halloween sort of attire on a bit and a bit Disney too. So I figure, yeah, that's good. That will get me in the spirit to channel with Judy Garland. All right, so let's bring in Judy. There's a specific point or question that this person wanted to know, so I'm going to focus the video on that and see where it goes from there. How about it? Sounds good, all right. Okay, let's see. Oh, nice, very nice. Okay. I see her in red, evening, like sparkly red dress. Like, it looks like she's got a little dress on that's like um, sequenced and like she's on a stage and it's just her. It's like a solo her and it looks later in her career is what it looks like. And she's coming out to talk with me. She's actually, there's a stool and she's gonna sit, kind of sit on the stool. And so she looks like she's on a stage. So I'm just gonna, it's not like an interview yet at this point. It literally looks like she's gonna do a show. So I'm gonna let that energy kind of settle in she always feels like she has to be on. She really does. I, she doesn't let her guard down very much. I really respect that. I respect that. And Judy, I think that you are an empath. Even in your human life experience, your spirit feels as though it was, you've been, th you were through a lot. You went through a lot in your life and had tremendous weight that you carried in your heart with such a gift or a talent. We see that with a lot of people, people here on Above Life Channel, like a reflective, reflected, in other spiritual channelings that we do that when you have a great talent and your life is really consumed with that and it's all about that, your identity gets so connected to it that it's hard to you let yourself grow in different ways or experience life in different ways or step out of what is expected of you because it's such a rigid expectation. So I feel like you were an empath and that's great because we can talk about that. I've talked about being an empath um, on Above Life Channel and also Fairy Grasshopper, so we can maybe talk about that a bit in our conversation today. But I'm specifically, she's like showing me, she's like, well, let's get on with the show. Um, I specifically am, yes, communicating with you because someone had reached out to me and asked specifically, how do you feel about being an icon for the gay community? And that's what the question was. And so I'm gonna present it to you that way and have a conversation around that. How do you feel about being like sort of an icon for the gay community? And let me just be real specific. It's hard for me to say that in that way because I feel like I wanna be inclusive, I wanna include all of what we use now today in our terminology, which is a wide variety and diverse subsets and segments and populations within that, that beautiful, robust community of LGBTQ+. So, but the specific question was about the gay community. And so I have such a, why do I have such a hard time with that phrase right now? I just do. That's interesting. I think it's because it feels like it identifies one part and really the question's about all, okay? So why in particular that subset or a niche of the population, 
why why were they drawn to you or why did you become such an icon for them or representative of them do you think like how do you how, what do you think about that and how do you feel about that um, this is a you guys this is a deep conversation this is a hard one for me to have <laughs> it is she says because of your own experiences Bridget your own experiences it's because of your dad, she says. She quote point. But okay, so this is gonna. This chair is gonna squeak. I. It's gonna bug me. You're gonna hear it if that bothers you. Too bad. <laughs> she says, good, good. She says, good. All right. So she says because of your dad. I don't know that my dad was a huge Judy Garland fan, but um, but definitely like. Uh, I can't see her. I can see her face, but I, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> oh, that should be a, that should clue you in right there. She's like, oh, that should clue you in. Oh yes, that should clue you in right there. She says. She's holding a martini glass, you guys, and I know that you struggled with at least some substances, um, alcohol. I assume, um, I assume some some other medication type things scenarios. Um, but she's holding a martini glass, and so and it's like. It's weird because it's like dirty martini with like two olives. That's what it looks like. And I don't know what the heck a dirty martini is. I'm not super well versed on the alcohol stuff, but that's what she has. Um, although I do like martinis. Chocolate martinis though, that's my thing. Oh, or a tiramisu martini. Yes, okay. So I like the chocolatey sweet. She's like, oh no, dry, dry, dirty martini. So she's holding it. Um, and she said, it's because of your dad, Bridget because of your dad okay so you might may or may not know here on above light channel that my father was gay and he um he died of aids back in 2002 and which at that time was a livable disease but he never it, he never shared his status of his sexuality with his family and also with his doctors and such until the very end and so therefore he really didn't have much leeway for help at that time it was too it was too full-blown by the time he got diagnosed and he died it was about six weeks seven weeks yeah so yeah it's tough for me honestly judy talking about it um she says you don't have to be she says um she's like talking about appreciating art and beauty she says it takes a tender heart she says to really appreciate beauty through art and the creativity of that art it takes a heart that has been broken open She's very, like, I feel her mannerisms. I'm trying, like, my body just naturally is doing it. If that bugs you, too bad. This is just how it feels. Like, I'm picking up on her energy, so I'm going to share it as Judy Garland is sharing. And she says, it takes a heart that has been broken. And she says, damaged by others to know what true beauty is. And she says, through your art, you share you can't hide. You can try. And she says, I would sing songs about happiness, she says, happiness and hoping to find that part of my heart again that was joyful and happy. And I think for everyone who doesn't want to be happy and even for a moment to escape the pain of what would be loneliness. She doesn't like to say it. She's not, a, she doesn't want to admit loneliness, but I see it and so I'm calling it loneliness because that's the truth. She said, you are so bold in the truth. Bridget, you are so bold in the truth. Yes, I would expect that of you. Just like the world expected many, many things of me, which I could never comply fully. Always within reach, but just out of touch from what the world truly needed. There are so many demands. Once you meet a certain threshold of popularity or of fame, there, there's not enough. 
there's simply not enough of you as a human to go around to meet all of the demands that are put upon you as a body. You push and push and push and push and push and maybe it is that some people would understand what it feels like to show up and give what others expect of you and to hold back the pain that you personally feel to give them what they need for a moment of freedom from their miserable lives. But those who really feel, who deeply feel the tragedy underneath the happiness, those people, those souls who have suffered and been segregated and abused, mistreated. Those are the souls that are worth performing for, that are worth sharing your all with and your spirit with them. And they gave me so much in return. They loved me fully, without question. It was always good enough. It was always magical. It was always, always enough. It was always enough. There was not judgment. And she says, okay, you guys. So she literally says, let's remember the frame of reference and the time zone that she, the timeline that she was in. She says, the gays, they just, they never judged. They never judged. They never judged. There's a lot we could learn from people who do not judge other people. And it's a good thing because I was always in my own mind judging myself. So there is nobody that could actually hurt me more than I have hurt myself. And I think many of your viewers could relate to that. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. You guys, I'm getting the vibe. It's almost like she's really shaky. I don't know if it's because of alcohol or medication or what the deal is but when I'm seeing her and she's presenting she's very shaky almost like a Parkinson's kind of shaky style she says the freedom to be left alone isn't what I want it isn't what most people want even if they say leave me alone that is the last thing a person wants or needs. They just don't want you to see them when they are miserable, when they can't get out of bed, when their eyes are swollen and puffy from the night before, trying to forget the pain of the loss of not being able to be with your children and, not ha and having so many failed relationships and critics reviews of you and how terribly horrible you are and clearly not talented and how old you are out of date that you are it is a relentless beating and even those people that try to help you're mean to like i I can't keep assistant to save my life. You can't, sooner or later, people will give up on you and you don't, I don't blame them. I don't blame them, but the community, as you say, as, you, as your friend said, the community, they always loved me. Unconditional, really, truly. You want to know unconditional love, you, you be with people who have experienced hate and the devastation that hate causes, the destruction of the heart, the shattered heart that you barely can function with. Those people who know pain, they are the ones you can trust to love, to appreciate, to not ask you to be more than you are, to not expect perfection because there's no such thing and they know 
There is no such thing as perfection. It's a lie. It's a bold face, a lie. Wow. A lot of empathic energy coming in. I can feel that. Thank you for sharing this. A lot of heart energy and the truth about who we are in our hearts, in our hearts and recognition of our own pain, our personal journeys. And I'm feeling you all as you're watching this, as you're, as a viewer and you're receiving this, channeling this psychic reading. It's so much more than that, do you see? Do you feel? Mm. And she just gives me a huge smile and she says, you know, <laughs> you know. We share, she says, we share and we connect from that soul level, she says. That's what performers do. They do speak right directly to you, she says. It's a soul to soul connection. And sometimes that happens in the heart, she says. And that's the truest place, she says. That, after all, that is the truest place to be is in the heart. And she's sharing that that's what she learned from her time on earth. The truest place to be is in the heart. I would probably say to Ms. Garland that it is also the hardest place to be, especially right now. I just feel that there's so much heart ache, collective aching right now. Yes, she says. Oh, there's always so much, she says. And she's kind of making it be like this um, unnecessary, excessive busyness, loudness. She's showing me this loudness energy, kind of feeling it in the heart space, loudness background noise that's not necessary. She's like all of this excessive energy stuff. And, and she doesn't use the word drama. It's not dramatic. It's this just loudness, this unnecessary, excessive, extra stuff. And it's not attached to emotion. She's just showing me that there's a lot of energy that's all fuzzy and linty and, and, and around us. And she's, she's showing that it is hard to hear. She says, it is hard to hear outside of you to get that guidance that you're asking for now. So her higher self, I can totally feel this higher evolved soul talking to me now as we're speaking. And she literally just comes and sits down on the side of the stage and has a conversation with me. She's kind of short, you're a little petite. I didn't realize she kicks off her shoes and she kind of crosses her legs at her ankles. And she says, there's a lot to learn here. She says, you're not gonna learn it all as a person. There's no way. She says, there's no way. Relax your expectations of your self growth. Can you just do that? She says, and she's like telling me, can you just do that? Can we all just collectively relax our expectations of our personal self growth? That's what Judy Garland is giving us as advice. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're just lovely. I really like you. We could have a drink together. She said, we could do shots. I'm like, okay, not a huge drinker, I'm good with the wine and a few drinks, yes, but I don't know about shots, we'll have to see. But nonetheless, I know that's a numbing, she's making a nod to numbing your pain. And she says it doesn't help. It just temporarily blocks what is building up behind that anyway. She says it doesn't work. It never works. Addiction truly, she says addiction does become a it's like a tattoo, you guys. She's showing me it's addiction becomes a very real part of the empathic experience for many people because of the feeling is so much. She says it's intense and it's relentless and it's it feels abusive, but she says it's not it's it's so ironic. She says because that's where this all this power is that you're really looking for to free you so that you can have peace and just experience life as yourself. And she says, I think that's why um, what many of us are looking for or seeking. And while there's while there is so much going on externally, internally, there is a request for your effort here, your presence here, your focus here is what Judy's saying from the afterlife. As an evolved spirit, she's giving the reflection of with all the external stuff going on, it's internal now. It's like 
there's an invitation, a request. She doesn't say invitation. She says a request for you to recognize inside what kinds of dialogues you're having with yourself. What kinds of emotions are your emotions? The only way you're going to know what's yours and what's not yours is if you know what's yours. <laughs> She's like, you have to identify your stuff. And she says, I'm not talking about the hard stuff. You know what your pain is. You know what your wounds are. She says, you know the experiences. I could ask you who told you you weren't good enough. And you could list me off five different people, experiences, et cetera, that you've had that, that told you that and affirmed that, she says. So it's not like you forget, like you don't know the pain, she says. So, so what if you knew the joy? What if you knew you had instant recognition of connection to the good all of the times you were told you were good not just talented not just that but as a person as a human that someone actually saw you and said you're incredible you're beautiful again not external but internal beautiful spirit light you are pure light you are love you are generous in your capacity, not what you're doing or giving to other people, but inside someone really seeing you. What if you could connect to that as easily or readily as you can connect with your pain? And she says, I challenge you to do that because you've had many people who have looked at you as if you were the only person on earth who look at you like you are a superhero. And yet you instantly in a human mind attach your inevitability of disappointing them, letting them down, screwing them over, making a mistake. Therefore, they're, you're gonna sh shatter your perfect image in their mind. So you're like, okay, yeah, you push that away. She says, no, 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 no. Just accept that. The beauty of the life that they see in you and recognize in you exactly as you are in the moment and let that be just so powerfully inspiring to you let it be what is true what you go to right away but it takes time to be in that space with yourself you have to train she's saying you have to train you have to prepare just like as if you were going to do a broadway show you have to prepare you have to study your lines you have to be ready it's not a performance, but it's a practice. It's a pattern. She's like, it's a rhythm, it's a pattern, it's a rhythm, it's a pattern. It has to mean enough to you. You have to mean enough to yourself. When that, she says, I get, I get it, it's hard to go there. It's new. It's a, it's an uncomfortable place for many of us. She says it's an uncomfortable place. I know. I know. I feel that too. I feel that as Bridget. Yes, I do. Judy, why do I see so much red with you? Oh, it's her favorite color. She's showing me red. I see a lot of red with you. Red also connects me to the energy of the heart chakra as a grounded place. So giving us a sense of center, that connects us to our human life experience while also honoring the energy of our emotion and the creativity that comes from our heart space, that we are co-creators of life. I definitely feel and sense that from you. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. This was lovely. This was great. This was a great conversation. Yeah, it's kind of deep too, right, you guys? It's deep. <sighs> I'm gonna go back and watch this myself. Thank you so much for your time today. I'm Judy Garland from The Afterlife. Thank you. Thank you, viewer at Above Life Channel for being here today. Before you go, make sure you select to follow and get notifications from Above Life Channel whenever there's a new video. I know YouTube has done some weird things lately, so some people are not getting notifications. Rest assured, every Monday, you can come back and just check out the channel, Above Life Channel on YouTube. Every Monday, I also post it on Facebook, Above Life Channel on Facebook, the link to the channeling for the week. Also, don't miss any editions of the Sunday Morning Coffee podcast. Again, shows up on Sundays. It's just an audio podcast for you to keep you inspired as you start the week. So we got Sunday and Monday posts here on Above Life Channel.
Hey, thanks so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. It's your life now, okay? So this is your life after all. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.